This is Stephen Foster uh, in conversation with uh, Juan Bolivar on the occasion of his uh, John Hansard Gallery exhibition. Juan, the exhibition is called uh, Geometry Wars. What made you decide on that for a title? Well, I'm not sure whether I should say actually because uh, I got the name from a computer game. I read it in Metro, a review for a computer game which essentially shapes at war. I thought that it was a rather apt title for uh, an artist such as myself who works with uh, uh, geometric shapes uh, and abstraction and the kind of conflicts uh, that I have with uh, uh, manipulating the shapes. But uh, I also liked the fact that Geometry Awards al alluded at a, a phrase which we might, or might not recognise or we might recognise um, which conjures up a sense of our times, you know, which is a, a phrase used by a, a president not so long ago uh, in a State of the Union speech to uh, describe uh, the current world climate. So I like the fact that it can reflect that as well. Um, but the war you're referring to is the war or the battle between abstraction and figuration. In yeah, the, the, there's, there's yeah. several things going on, or should I say primarily two things. There's a kind of personal... Uh, engagement with the idea of geometry wars, which is my own history as an abstract painter and my own uh, dilemmas in trying to resolve the process of making a painting, but on the other hand, how that fits in with the bigger picture. You know? mm -hmm. Previously, you were making works which um, were abstract paintings, like flat field colour paintings that resembled portraits or faces. Mm. Clearly, the not being able to see one without the other, you know, not being able to flip from abstraction to mm -hmm. figuration, but being in one area or the other was very very clear in that mm. particular group of works but the result very often came out as very humorous i mean mm. you thought of as being a humorous artist with a kind of certain serious mm. intent yes the humor which actually got a little bit out of hand you know because they were never meant to be humorous the idea of making a painting which is at once abstract and uh, also um, uh, the resemblance of, of a face uh, was a kind of slightly, uh, for myself, slightly subversive uh, yeah. aspect because um, it's like when people draw a moustache on the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very simple gesture, you know, uh, and in a sense I was taking elements of abstractions which normally are very serious uh, and then I was sort of conjuring them into uh, these images which uh, was diametrically opposed to the idea of abstraction being a sort of contemplative, uh, serene, um, you know, without words, you mm. know. So that, that's where the kind of humour came, which was more of a sort of like nervous reaction, really. I thought a great deal about the humour. Where did this humour come from? Mm. And I came up with two uh, ideas of what might cause it. One is that the, the semblance of a face is the most basic kind of mark making, mm. two dots and you've got a pair of eyes and then you've got a face. But the tiniest little details would create all sorts of personalities almost. Mm -hmm. This kind of dumbness of the image. I think the viewer mm. looking at them feels the humour's at their expense. They're yes. being, because of this yes. dumb image is looking at them and they're, yes. they're seeing a, a, a curly-haired mm -hmm. uh, gypsy person or something. But yes, uh, and also the fact whether, uh, whether it's proper to be having those thoughts when looking at those paintings. Mm. Um, but but uh, with these paintings, uh, I think what I tried to do was, in a sense... Uh, draw away from the argument because it was becoming kind of quite a um, th the games that were being played were sort of were too sort of readily understood by myself and perhaps even by uh, the audience. So there's an element of uh, with some of these paintings of having removed lots of elements, you know, primarily colour. Uh, secondly, the idea of the faciality, and third, the humour isn't as much of a one-liner, you know, as it was with the uh, faces. So you use the word faciality. They're not people, they're not... They're not people. Uh, they're, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's faciality. I'm not sure whether it's a word that actually exists. I kind of half made it up and half read it somewhere and perhaps misspelled it. And uh, it's meant to evoke the, the uh, experience of recognising a face uh, rather than they do a portrait, which is more of a readily understood idea of um, depiction. Almost like uh, facial typologies, mm. sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so in this exhibition, uh, there's something rather darker <laughs> happening. So there, in fact, there are two galleries with two different worlds represented, mm -hmm. in a sense, and uh, but they both have a kind of dark side. Mm. Uh, or, and presumably this is 
to remove some of that rather frivolous humour. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, w when we look at the work here, uh, we're looking at the, the end result of a process. Um, it's not something that I would have set up from the beginning to uh, create one room and then another room uh, and the sort of dark atmosphere, as you call it. It's, 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 the, it's the kind of end result of um, a project, in a sense. And it's only when I, I look back on, on the last sort of six months um, that I realise that actually there's something slightly um, uh, operatic about the exhibition um, and that the um, aspect of um, uh, darkness, as you say, is similar to the drama that's built up in an opera, perhaps, uh, where you have uh, clues throughout and you have a plot uh, and you have perhaps a, a story that's been told uh, and you have uh, props uh, and lights etc so the, the whole thing is sort of for me sort of ended up reading much more uh, in that way mm -hmm. rather than uh, I have a message about the world uh, being X, Y and Z. It's not a message but it is a, a certain grimness and a, a, a different kind of dumbness in some sort of way I mean there is a kind of empty heraldry present mm -hmm. in some of the things there are some vaguely menacing but threatening things mm. that don't kind of menace or threaten mm -hmm. and then there are lots of things that are just broken. Are there any in particular that you could? Uh, the heraldry I see as the kind of mm -hmm. um, vaguely medieval imagery. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, there are weapons mm. or things that appear like mm. that they might be weapons but they don't feel threatening somehow mm. even if it's something like a gun staring you in the face. Mm -hmm. It's almost like um, a pretense or a, mm. A, a, a stance, mm -hmm. and then there are there are things that are broken. There are things that are mm -hmm. very very poorly nailed up. I can imagine uh, mm -hmm. with, with, with t timber that's broken, that's kind of yes, uh, yes. that's fixed or half fixed. Yes. So where, 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 what lies behind these images? You're you're obviously starting with mm -hmm. thematic positions. Mm -hmm. aren't you? I'm not I'm not entirely sure what lies behind it. I mean, I think that gallery number one there's a sense of um, almost adoration for abstraction. Uh, if you see the painting Geometry Wars, which is uh, positioned in front of the prototype meter, you know, you get a slightly reverential sort of moment. You know, you have uh, this uh, gold bar and uh, you have the, the curve of the gallery and this painting. And uh, to a certain extent, that's my position with abstraction and, and painting and, and art as a whole, this mm. element of um, hope and uh, veneration for making these sort of objects. Um, but as you come through the, onto Gallery 2, who we're not, it's more of um, not a question mark as such, but perhaps once the uh, romantic wish, and this, this room is more perhaps, uh, uh, you know, the world today, you know. So it's a kind of acceptance that, you know, things aren't as perhaps you would have hoped for, but that nevertheless they are as they are and that you have to sort of deal with it in some ways. So um, the, uh, the structures that sometimes look fixed or mended or damaged, um, I'm not quite sure where they came about. I, I think sometimes they're a commentary on modernism itself. Um, sometimes they're social commentary because we see images of uh, uh, you know, disasters and things like that. So it's a way to kind of draw you back into the fact that abstraction or painting or art uh, doesn't exist uh, in isolation, mm -hmm. that it exists within a world. And in fact, one of my favourite paintings is uh, Kenny, sorry, Hoodie, uh, a painting based on the um, character from South Park. Uh, and I like the idea that this uh, painting sort of summed up a lot of the um, tragicomic elements which I've been discussing in relation to the exhibition because he's a character in this animated series who has died, I think, something like 71 times in uh, 149 episodes. And you know, we experience his grief, you know, sort of over and over again. And, uh, uh, you know, and we, we laugh every time rather than sort of feel sorry for him. But, um, and, I, and I think that he, he's, he's the kind of, um, uh, the innocent, you know, in, in this world, mm. you know, sort of watching everything go by. So he's the only kind of witness uh, or the only um, semblance of, you know, faciality as with previous paintings. Um, 
And I think uh, what he also does is that he reminds us or, of, of this painting's being contemporary paintings, you know, which is important. Mm. Uh, you know, that they're not just the uh, homages to uh, the history of abstraction. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the abstraction for a bit. The, mm -hmm. Again, going back to the faces, they mm -hmm. were all, all revolving around the idea of uh, symmetry or near symmetry. In fact, it's the slight removal from the symmetry that mm -hmm. kind of gives them their tension. Um, as, as a face does itself. It's, it's mm -hmm. not symmetrical, and we all know mm -hmm. it's not, but it's very close to it. Um, some, there are still some symmetrical paintings, Hoodie being one of them, mm -hmm. uh, in, in this exhibition, but most of them are quite specifically mm -hmm. unsymmetrical. They mm -hmm. have a different compositional feel about them altogether. Mm -hmm. Was that a conscious decision in terms of the way in which the paintings began? I, I hadn't really thought about it. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> I'm possibly aware that um, I have made paintings which um, follow certain rules. So um, I think that within the boundaries of abstraction, I'm possibly thinking of ways in which I can disturb that mm. definition. I mean, um, not only not only were the earlier ones uh, up mm. to and including yeah. uh, uh, hoodie. Mm -hmm. uh, near symmetrical, mm -hmm. they were based on uh, accumulations of curves very largely. Mm -hmm. Whereas something like the staircase here is very particularly got no curves in it whatsoever. Yeah, and there are a lot that are based entirely on straight lines. Well, I think what I have tried to do is change the vocabulary within the paintings because some of the previous paintings were um, uh, they were quite restricted to uh, a very limited vocabulary. Uh, and that again, it's my kind of, um, it stems from my ideas of how a painting should be made perhaps, you know, uh, which uh, is to do with having a certain amount of, of rules, you know, which you play within. Uh, but I think uh, every now and then you just get a bit bored of, you know, having the same rules. So you uh, add a few more rules. Rules are there to be broken, yes. aren't they, of course. But, um, you know, there would never be... A, there would never be shapes that don't correspond to some rule. You know, it's just a thing that I've had uh, an expansion of the rules that I use, uh, which is possibly uh, as a result of the palette being more limited. It's allowed me to do more things, you know. Your work is based on a limited palette, mm -hmm. and previous work that I've seen had a kind of mm -hmm. muted, um, tonally restricted mm -hmm. um, variation on coloured greys, in fact. Mm -hmm. But the, those those vague tints have disappeared altogether pretty much here, mm -hmm. haven't they? And so it's a black and white and grey show. Yes. What, what was the thinking behind that? Without going back to the humour aspect too much, because I, I like jokes, you know, I like funny things, you know, I like Seinfeld, you know. Mm. Um, you know, it's not that uh, I'm averse to humour, but I also want the work to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And I realised that uh, some of the times when I made paintings which had... Um, a high sort of pitch of colour that uh, when you combine cartoon-like imagery with a certain type of colour you end up with things that look like props from an Italian game show or something you know you look like uh, you know you're having a kids party or something and and I wanted to find a way to you know way f filter that aspect but still let you see some of the humour so uh, what I've I think reached through sort of in the uh, the grayscale uh, palette is um, a, a midpoint where you oscillate between uh, the tragedy or the comedy mm. or the two polarities mm. rather than uh, looking at a painting and thinking, oh, I think that's so funny. Mm. So, um, also in the gallery here we've got uh, a, a, a display of drawings and mm. pre preparatory material, mm -hmm. some of which goes back a long, long way. Yes. In fact. But uh, I think a lot of people would find your working method quite uh, uh, surprising, mm. given the fact that the work itself is so meticulously finished, yes. that actually they come from very, very um, scrappy kind of ideas that are yes. scribbled and uh, scratched. And, and, and the actual making of the paintings also is a combination of uh, high precision with the Muppet Show. Uh, I mean, there will be um, uh, lots of pots of paint, you know, with colour and paint flying about and... Uh, uh, you know, receipts that I've used for like palettes and things like that. It's not um, 
the kind of clinical steer approach that I have, and it's and it's actually quite direct. But yes, I, I will. Uh, in particular, with this painting, so I, I began by making um, a lot of drawings, and then selecting from those drawings uh, a group which I thought I could work from for this exhibition. Uh, but I found that in the past, when I worked uh, perhaps more directly from uh, the computer, you know that. Uh, I became an extension of the computer rather than the computer helping me to make work. You know, I was basically um, a human printer, you know, mm. and that was very interesting. Mm. With, us, with a lot of these paintings, if I begin with uh, the sketch of an idea, the, it always allows for, uh, for, for unexpected things to happen halfway mm. through, you know, which you know, wouldn't otherwise if you mm. just say, I'm going to do that, sort of mm. six foot square or something. Something that struck me in all of your exhibitions is that they're unapologetically elegant and beautiful. I mean, it's a very beautiful exhibition, mm -hmm. and that's something you want. Yes, I mean, um, I think there's an element of uh, my practice uh, which is uh, rooted in, I don't want to say formalism, because then that immediately uh, makes you sort of you know, switch channels, but there is an element of um, perhaps a classical approach even mm -hmm. to abstraction, whatever mm. that might mean. Mm. Um, you know, it, the, these are like uh, Ellsworth Kelly with stories, you know, that's mm. the way I see them, or Alan Charlton's mm. with uh, uh, swords stuck mm. in. <laughs> so I, I want, part of me wants to be a, you know, a painter who makes a room full of just grey panels, you know, like Alan Charlton or um, Agnes Martin, Ellsworth Kelly, I like all those artists. But I also know that if I did that, as I have done in the past, that I would possibly become something of a sort of tribute act. Mm. But it's um, high modernism for the mo modern age. It, it is, mm. yeah, it is. It's abstraction for, for the kids. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Well, it's a very beautiful show, as I say. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>